Hello and welcome to the first of the geekadvisor.co.nr geek tutorials. On this week's geek tutorial we will be covering how to make your own operating system. This is going to be a simple procedure that will take you no longer than 10 minutes to make um, if it's all pre-planned um, but it, it won't take you longer than an hour. It's very simple as we always promise with our services, it's free, it's fast, and it's just a great piece of software. Um, but there's actually no need to download it. It's all online. You only download the finished operating system on your chosen format. Okay, now the first thing you're going to need to do is you'll need to, you're going to need to type in Google Suzy Studio. And then you can see it up here. So if you just type that into Google or the address bar, it'll come up. Okay, then you'll get a screen looking like this. Obviously, because it's around, they still haven't sorted out the Christmas banner. So it's still a bit Christmassy, but it'll always look roughly like this with the robot in Suzy Studio. First thing you need to do is sign in or create an account. You can sign in with a number of these. There's no real need to create an account because everyone's got a Facebook or Google or Yahoo etc account um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign in with my Google account so ok now it sometimes can take a while but just be patient with it ok and there we go we are in as you can see I was doing a bit of a practice with the unknown desktop that's not what we're going to be doing today now, once you're logged in, or you've registered and you're logged in, you'll appear to your main screen, um, and this is what it'll look like, excluding these, these won't be here. First thing you need to click on is Create New Appliance, under the Actions tab. And then, you're going to need to do the OpenSUSE 12.1 Just Enough OS. Now, this is literally as it suggests just enough for the operating system it's a linux based operating system so it's all done by code so it's mainly for geeks um, so you'll create that now obviously if you didn't want to do that it is possible you can create a gnome desktop now a gnome desktop is kind of like windows um, it will appear slightly like windows operating systems um, in fact, you can click on it. Um, but for just a demonstration today, we're going to be looking at the Just Enough OS, and then we shall move on to the Gnome Desktop feature. Okay? Now, so simply click on that, as you can see there. Select your architecture, 32-bit um, or 64-bit, depending on what you want. Here, so I just leave mine as 32-bit, and then name it. But don't worry if you make a mistake, you can always change it later. So I'll just call it the, oops, the Geek Advisors, Advisors OS. Okay, click Create Client. Give it a couple of seconds. And there you go. We're ready to start configuring uh, everything that you need on your op operating system. Now, first, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to add the basic programs onto your operating system. So the things that come with it, I mean, on Windows you've got things like Paint, Word, Notepad, this kind of thing. And it's the same with kind of this Linux system, but you will need um, to add these manually, such as GIMP instead of paint, you will have a kind of notepad program and these are generally under the uh, basic ones you need you know. so you just click switch to the software tab 
and they're the ones that are on there and they'll just generally it's best to just leave them alone because they're the ones that it needs to run um, and then you can just have a look around now for example we'll just get a few we'll search for GIMP see if that's available yep as you can see it's available you click add that will then add it to your base files as you can see over here there you go so they now you can go back and that's still selected um, the text we can do office I'd say office would be more likely you know uh, there you go if you just wanted the writer you can just get the writer on its own or you can get the entire thing here but mine just for demonstrations I'll just go for the writer okay um, another thing I'm not going to use as a server let's check the desktop see if it's got anything majorly interesting um, we'll go for the multimedia purely because if it's popular it's generally good you know um, they're very good on here at admitting when things are bad and that kind of thing so okay so you can just simply spend as long as you want I mean there's all kind of things networking office development text graphics games all sorts of things. so I'll just add a I'll just add a final game uh, I don't know, Frozen Bubble. I've got no idea what it is, but it sounds interesting, to say the least. Okay, that seems to be all for that bit. Okay, now once you've finished this bit, and you've confirmed everything's fine, then click on Configuration, and this is where you get down to the personal stuff. So the first thing you need to do is look at the language. Now obviously you can tell by my accent, English UK, so I'll change that to UK. Now, keyboard layout, generally I'd set it to UK because US sometimes is a bit funny with the at symbol. Um, and then default time zone, because uh, I want this to be distributed uh, throughout the world, you can just click on ask on first boot, that will then ask them. Firewall, you'll always want that enabled. Okay, now obviously you get these up. So you just simply click on them and you can install those. And you leave those like that because you're going to need them, you know, standard. The network, um, You just simply just use the network manager, that seems to be the simplest option, you know, you can choose and all this kind of thing. Um, you can, in fact, no, we'll do it in first boot, you know, just to get it out of the way and done. But we'll add that just in case they uh, change their mind. So whenever it always says anything like this, just simply add it. Because, I mean, it's only adding a couple of megabytes, it's simple stuff. Now, this is where you're going to create your password. So obviously it's Linux. It's not exactly the simplest operating system, so this isn't one for the non-geeks, but don't turn off the video yet if you're not exactly the best at coding, etc. Don't worry, after this, I will be doing a known desktop one, it's just like Windows. Okay, so you're going to want the root and then the standard user. So for the root, I'll use the password geek, and then this one will do the name, um, TGA, the Geek Advisor. Leave that blank, you don't need to worry about that. Leave that, leave that. Change the home directory, that's it, to TGA. You should automatically do it when you click on it. Um, if not, you may have to enter it manually. It's just the same as what you put here for the login name. Okay. And the password, I'll just put advisor. Okay, that's fine. You click off it to make sure it's fine. Wait for the save icon to disport the or you click next, otherwise this can cause some errors sometimes. Now, um, you can always upload your own logos. So if I just um, upload, so it should be, I think, over here. No. So we'll upload that. And you can upload your own logo or, you know, just use a standard if you just want it because you purely are bored, you know it happens and then click on that one and you can see the preview changes and then you can choose your background or you can even select your own background 
Now, I don't actually have a background uh, designed because I'm not actually going to create an operating system. Uh, that's a bit excessive to develop at the moment. But if in the future we uh, get loads of likes on this video, then I shall make one and put it on the website for free download as always. Um, I'm gonna stick. I'm not gonna. I don't want really the Open Susie logo. It kind of takes away the professional. So I simply do that. Now move on to start up. Start in one level. Generally, I'd go for the graphical login so they can actually see. Uh, now you can always add um, uh, an end user license agreement. So if you have a specific license or copyright, etc., this is generally the file you'll stick it in so that they know what they're getting into um, when they're installing it, etc. Server, you don't need it. Uh, desktop, you can choose automatically login, but I wouldn't typically select it because um, if it does this on the first boot or you need to change something, it's you know, it's a bit tedious to have to log out and log in manually. Now, click on Appliance, Disk and Memory. Okay, now here you can, um, you can see everything here. This will allow you to change the memory that it's allowed. It's, it's generally hard to say what you're going to require, because it all requires on the system you're going to install it on. Now, gen click on that. Okay. Uh, you don't need to do this. Additional options. Um, VMware. You don't really need to try this out on VMware because uh, I think there's a try me option at the end of this, and uh, I'll show you then. Uh, you can have the live installer. It's helpful, I suppose, in some ways. I'm just going to leave these as the defaults. Now you can change them. But make sure uh, you check that it's going to work. Because I mean, you couldn't have something like you know nine 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 gigabytes because it's just it just wouldn't work. The system would just crash. Now go to scripts for the final thing. Okay, you don't really need to do anything. Leave it as it is. Don't worry about it. Now move on to the next tab up here, which says files. Just click on that. Now these are the files um, that are default, so if you wanted to add a letter from, say if I wanted to add a letter from the Geek Advisor telling you about this and telling you about our software etc etc, then this is where you'd add it from, or you can add it even from the web, you know, just add an L. But you don't generally do that. Now move on to the build section, and you can give it a version, you know if you want to make it fancy generally you go for something like one. 0.0.2.4.8.5 no. It looks better than version 0.0.1 It just, it doesn't have the same effect Now, you can obviously change the format on which you want to create it because once, uh, you can create it in all of these formats you just have to do it separately um, These are the formats that you're going to use to install on your system uh, So, for example, if you're using just a virtual machine or VMware virtual box uh, you just get it on that. If you actually want to install it, you get the ISO format or the preload ISO. Okay? I'm just going to do the USB stick hard disk. Uh, you can choose additional. I don't need that. Now you click build. Okay, I think it should say start and build. Um, now as you can see, if you scroll down, you'll sit here. And while this is doing it, you can actually change the version and add another one. So you can do a vis different version number for different um, formats. Okay, so that's just going to start the build soon. And uh, so that's um, generally the whole process. Okay, the um, disk image has just finished building. Uh, and as you can see, it will just it will remain like this. And you've got the three options, you can view the files, you can download it and uh, use it, or you can give it a test drive. Now for this demonstration I'm going to give it a test drive just to show you what it's like. So we'll click on that.
Okay, so it's just uh, now because obviously it's on the first boot, it's going to need a bit of time to load. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna I'll just pause this video and I shall play it when it's loaded. Okay. Um, okay, guys. Now I've actually run out of time in this video. Otherwise, it's just going to take hours and hours to upload. Um, uh, but don't panic. It's pretty. Don't worry. You leave it on this, and you will be fine. It will eventually load. Um, if not, just create the VMware version. Download a free version of VMware. Um, I don't. I think there's a free version. There used to be. Uh, I'll check that, and if there is, I'll put it on the website um, for the link. Um, and look out for the next video which will be on the GNOME desktop which as I said is a Windows operating system kind of okay uh, it looks like Windows basically like the desktop of it okay now uh, thank you for watching uh, we hope you enjoyed this Geek Advisor Geek tutorial on making your own operating system which is Linux based um, and we hope you continue to use our services and we hope to see you in the near future.